What's going on guys? Welcome back to this video. Today we're going to talk about Windows internals and we're going to use this room from TryHackMe to demonstrate the concepts. So instead of going through the readings, let's jump to an interactive board and demonstrate the concepts. So the very first thing we want to know about Windows internals is that Windows internals are the core components of Windows operating systems. We call them the Windows internals. Windows rely on the uh, on these internals to operate at its core and therefore understanding Windows internals play a critical role in when it comes to exploiting these components especially if you are conducting routine engagement or if you want to exploit specific process or binary you want to understand how uh, these internals work so we will start to explore these internals first thing we have is the processes so it's processes is a critical component in the windows operating system now let's talk a bit about processes so a process is can be explored in what's called the task manager if we open task manager we can see a list of all the processes running now every process is run by an application so when you run an application the application spawns one or two processes and the third thing about process is that there is parent and there is child processes technically the child process depends on the parent process and it takes the commands from it so if you end the child process it doesn't mean that the parent process will be ended um, the other thing about the processes is that they occupy or they have Let's first talk about the components before we talk about the, the virtual addressing or the memory uh, addressing. So now, the process components. Every process has, let's first um, the, uh, put here something like components of the process. So first thing, we have what is called the private address space or the private virtual address space the other component so that's one two we have the executable program or the executable app so when you execute the app you will have the process launched the third component is the open handles the fourth component of a process or the process is the security configurations security configs I write fast because uh, to make this more interactive and five we have the process PID or the process ID and at the end we have the threads okay let's look about every single one of these first thing we have the virtual address space so as you know guys there is something called the memory manager so what happens the memory manager is actually a component that manages the uh, memory allocation between the virtual and the physical memory so what happens the memory manager assigns the process let's say we have notepad okay now the memory manager assigns this process what is called the virtual address space so basically the memory manager communicates or bridge the gap between the virtual address space and the physical address usually when processes are launched they occupy memory addresses or they occupy memory space so basically in order to prevent collusion between processes we have the memory manager here that manages the uh, translation of physical addresses into memory or vir private virtual address space so regularly over uh, basically the processes use virtual address space uh, as a memory uh, you know to for memory address allocation and memory manager manages the translation from the physical addresses to virtual address space next we have the executable app now in this example it could be notepad 
third we have the handles the handles are the resources used by the process it could be objects they could be files they could be dls they could be functions and we have the security configurations the security configurations includes the user allowed to run the process the groups the permissions next we have the process id the process id you can see it in task manager so for every process we have the process id and usually it is used to kill the process or to manage the process uh, using task manager or maybe the process list in linux and lastly we have the threats threats are units so let's talk about threats every process has multiple threats the threads control the execution of the process that's the a function of a thread now if you go back a little bit here and uh, talk a bit more in details about the virtual address space so you know guys we have here the physical memory and we have the virtual memory okay so basically here the process is using the virtual memory as we discussed earlier the physical memory here it could be 8 gigabyte 16 gigabyte depends on your specifications but basically the the memory resource allocation is translated from physical memory into virtual memory and then to the process through what is called we discussed this earlier it is the memory manager memory manager use pages or transfers to handle the uh, memory now for 64 bit operating systems we have a maximum and minimum virtual virtual address space that can be allocated so in 64 operating systems it is 256 terabytes maximum virtual address space that's the max now in 32 bit the maximum virtual address space that can be allocated is 4 gigabytes and usually this maximum virtual address space is divided between user processes and the system processes okay now why all this is important to understand the virtual memory the threads the processes the components of this process because later on if you either uh, if you work in blue team or red team settings you will need to understand the process injection and there is also the process hollowing all of these are attacks that target processes usually backdoors or rootkits they target processes and they hide uh, through legitimate windows uh, processes so understanding the memory allocation all of the details help you a lot if you want to uh, conduct process injection or if even if you want to detect process injection now we have additional thing to talk about in windows internals which is the dls so dl stands for dynamic link library so dynamic link link library or a dll usually a dll is a code contains data that can be used by processes so a single dll can be used by multiple processes okay now this mechanism provides faster operating system faster load time of processes a single dll can be used by multiple processes and usually a dll contains code and data that can be used by more than one program at the same uh, time now when it comes to um, security and cyber attacks usually we have multiple attacks that happen we have what's called the dll hijacking 
we also have DLL injection. So what happens here, say we have a notepad process. And let's say notepad is using um, multiple DLL, DLL1, DLL2, DLL3, so on and so forth. Now, Notepad uses these DLLs to operate <coughs> and function properly. So, in DLL hijacking, what happens? An attacker creates a DLL similar to one of these DLLs. So let's say this DLL is named as um, sample. Sample.dll. An attacker would create the same name of this DLL, a payload using MSF Venom, maybe. You could use MSF Venom to create a payload named sample.dll then the attacker would go ahead and replace the legitimate DLL with their own malicious DLL what happens now the process when it runs it will need these DLLs to function properly so instead of loading the legitimate DLL now it is loading the attackers created DLL uh, the next thing to talk about briefly it is the PE or the portable executable the portable executable format is the you know core of Windows executables and every file every binary with exe format okay has what is called the portable executable header usually the header can be analyzed using hex editors and it contains information about the true nature of the file including the signature okay and other details such as the extension can be found in the portable executable header the portable executable header contains other information about the uh, executable files we have the sections table Okay, the sections they will contain information about the contents of the file such as the code imports and other sorts of data these are some uh, parts of an executable file now these sections can be again analyzed using a hex editor or you can use an executable program to analyze the portable executable header such as detect it detect it easy this is a program that we'll be demonstrating in this video now let's jump to a practical scenario and see what are the questions that can be answered in this task let's go through the first task and answer the questions open the provided log file in process monitor and answer the questions below so we have a directory called process monitor we open the directory and we see there is a log file we're gonna drag this to process monitor and use process monitor to open this log file to answer the questions so the example here revolves around the process notepad we're gonna have to answer some questions by digging into the details related to this process okay so we're going to use the filter and here we can select process name is we're going to copy this 
So here we're using the process name. Oh, not we actually made a mistake. Go back, process name, and then use notepad, add, and then we're going to use apply, click OK. So now we have filtered all of the entries to be narrowed down to show only the notepad process. What is the process ID? So this is what we talked about earlier, the process PID or the PID. So here it is 5,984. What is the parent process ID of the previous process? Now to have or to find more details about the process, we're going to need to right click here, properties, and here the details will highlight the parent process ID, as you can see here, which is 3,412. What is the integrity level of the process? We click the process tab and we highlight the integrity section. You can see the value is high. It has high integrity. It hasn't been modified and it has the correct Microsoft signature. Now we're going to go to threads. So here the same file is opened. What is the thread ID of the first thread created by notepad process? The thread ID of the first thread. So here it is very pretty much obvious that the first entry is thread create and it highlights the thread ID 5908. But what's the correct way to find the thread ID? We're going to use again the filter. And here we're going to use the, the, the operation. operation is thread create add this apply and we will have all of the operations where the operation equals to thread create here we can see the first one or highlight the first one and find the id uh, directly can be found from the details column what is the stack argument of the previous thread that's the previous thread we're going to highlight this right click properties go to stack wait what's the stack argument yeah so stack argument can be found here under the thread all right now let's go to virtual memory so what is the total theoretical maximum virtual address space of 32 bit system it's 4 gigabyte we answer this what default setting flag can be used to reallocate the user process address space you can find this in the readings increase user va open the log file we already did that what is the base address of the notepad okay now we're gonna go back here to the filter remove the operation and apply to restore the previous view the base address of the notepad process so to find the base address we have to look for uh, the operations performed by the process and specifically we're going to look for load image the first load image operation loads the process itself from its executable file from that entry we can find the base address it can be found pretty much easily from the column the detail column we can see the base address is written here Okay, dynamic link libraries. Open the provided file in process monitor. We already did that. What is the base address of NT DLL? Okay, so now we're gonna have to filter for the DLLs. As you can see from the path here, we can see we have DLLs loaded by the process, such as kernel 32 DLL. What we can do here, we can use this to filter for all the loaded DLLs. So filter, and we're going to use the path. The condition will be contains dot DLL. We want to show all the DLLs. Apply, and we can see now all the DLLs loaded. So right of the path, the first entry is NT DLL. We can see the base address of this process from the details section. What is the size of the NTDLL from Notepad? We can right click and we can take a note of the size. The image base is the image or the image base address and the size indicates the size. 
how many DLLs were loaded by Notepad? So how many DLLs? As you can see now, we can see all the DLLs, but all of, some of these entries are repeated. We want a list of all DLLs without the uh, recurring ones. What we're going to have to do here, we're going to have to use the load image. Okay. So filter, remove the path, use the load image operation operation is load image okay so that shows 53 details but in fact they are only 51 so what we're gonna do we're going to use additional filtering for this I'm going to go back And here we're going to select the path again contains dot tll add and this should narrow down the results to 51 the answer is 51 dll's portable executable format okay here we're going to analyze a portable executable using detected easy so going here to this directory we're going to open die or detect it easy to analyze the portable executable header of notepad so here we're going to search for notepad We select notepad and we have the information this is very um, useful if you want to analyze or do um, static analysis of a portable executable static analysis is part of uh, the process of analyzing malwares which is a process to analyze a uh, executable without opening it so what p component prints the message this program cannot be run you can find this from the readings, those stop, open notepad, we opened. What's the entry point reported by the program? You can find the entry point here. You can just right click and copy this. What is the value of number of sections? It is right here in the sections. And what is the virtual address of the dot data section? We're going to open the sections. Go to sections and highlight dot data here. We can see that the virtual address can be found here. What string is located at the offset? Now we analyze the strings. We click on strings. And the offset is 4001F99C. Looks like the, it doesn't work here. So if we scroll down, it's pretty much somewhere here. So 99C. Okay, so this is it. And the string is Microsoft Notepad. The last task is also pretty much obvious. You're just going to have to go to this directory and execute this using the command line and it will give you the flag and this will conclude the room of this video.